Welcome to Dave's Workshop, and Garden Railway. Please share this video to spread the joy of live steam. Don't forget to like, and subscribe for more videos. Before we get stuck into the smoke box, I just wanted to increase the wheel recess to better match that of my other locos. I prefer how they look. I put them back on the turning mandrel, using the forge or chuck to get the mandrel running true. Here are the four wheels, two have been modified. They will need painting again. On the middle shelf of the oven, at 90 degrees Celsius for at least an hour. Heat being applied, top and bottom. I don't put workpieces in until the temperature has stabilized for quite a long time, as early on, the top element is glowing red hot. Wheels back on the loco, and oiled up. Fly cutting the datum face for the smoke box front plate. It is 1.6 mil steel sheet. I have a lifetime supply. Two edges have been milled square, then the plate marked out using permanent marker pen ink, and scribing with the digital caliper and dividers. The top waste piece cut off with the hacksaw. A complicated way of setting up the piece to mill the third face parallel. Front plate set up in the fore jaw, with the wobbler bar in the center punched hole, to get it running true. An MDF backing piece to allow tool run through, as the backs of the jaws are otherwise in the way. Initial boring out using a high speed steel hole saw, it is the best size that I had. Board to size, 2.1 inches or 53.3 mil diameter. Cleaned up. Ready for profiling. Radiused by sawing, grinding, and filing. It took a long time, but that's okay. Now it's time for the smoke box back plate. I decided to use the 4 mil hot rolled steel, thicker to provide a better push on seal for the boiler barrel. Ready for marking out. Using the front plate as a template. The heavy scribing is easily visible. Hack sawing to the line. Squaring the job up for milling the second face. Fly cutting to finish the height. The smoke box back plate is fitted to a face plate for boring. This is because the four jaw chuck would crush the thin wall section at the top. Set to center height in the lathe. I used the wobbler bar and dial test indicator again to clock it up. Board to size for the 2.5 inch, 63.5 mil, boiler barrel. The excess has been sawn off for profiling the large radius. I used the bench grinder and then files for finishing. Fitting the boiler barrel shell. I bought this large tube 10 years ago. Here are the back and front plates. Very pleasant to make, and a lot of work. Marking out the 1.6mm steel sheet for the smoke box wrapper. A thin strip needs sawing off to true up the edge. The Eclipse 55 sheet metal saw is perfect for this long cut. Now that I am wearing reading spectacles, I can saw right up to the line. That's the saw cut, now to file to the line for a straight edge. I was able to get the saw cut to five thousandths of an inch off the line. Turning down the bending radius for the smoke box wrapper. I used this for forming the large De Winton boiler shell in 2006. Here is my setup for heating and bending the wrapper. Two vice grips were very useful. The bending was not easy, and many days were spent wondering how to do it, for the wrapper would always bend back a little and large gaps for the smoke box end plates would not be good. Filing the ends to length. Held together with a crossways bolt and a small toolmaker's clamp for the photo opportunity. The M6 bolt goes through an undersize hole for the exhaust piping.
I realized that some discs were required so that I could apply some force to the wrapper via the end plates to finish form it. The discs were cut from the 4mm steel and rough ground to shape. Then drilled through 6mm for mandrel turning and fixing screws. Turn to size on a loco wheel turning mandrel. Checking the fit. This disc blank will stop this thin wall from deforming. Both disc blanks finished. Applying a bit of persuasion, without risk of squashing that lovely back plate. All screwed down and tightened up. Ready for heating to red heat, to anneal it, in the correct position. The top screw pulls up the center bar, holding the disc blanks, pulling the end pieces into the wrapper radius. The back plate has been silver brazed. The wrapper did not move on heating. The annealing was successful. The job has been cleaned up by Dremel for brazing the front plate. The front plate has been brazed. The job is sat on a piece of refractory paper to keep me from wasting heat into the fire bricks. Pretty in pink. I pickled the job in my citric acid bath, which has seen many dunkings of the quarry Hunslet copper boiler, imparting a microscopic layer of copper onto the steel. Here's the front, a smokebox door is needed. I put the smokebox on the four jaw chuck to skim the bores. When you bend sheet free hand without bending rolls the edges always rise up. You can see where I have filed these down. Action shot. It's only about 200 rpm though. I don't often get to use chuck jaws this way. Cleaned up after a lot of dremeling with a tiny abrasive flapper wheel. The quarry hunslet has a steel smokebox too, but, I will paint this one internally before use. That top hole is going to need opening out soon, so that the loco may breathe. Making a start on the chimney base. 1.5 inches, or, 38.1 mil free cutting steel bar. Drilling through half an inch, or 12.7 mil, it's my largest drill. Parted off to length, ready for boring. Bored to 3 quarters inch, or just over 19 mil. That's the internal diameter of the chimney. Radiusing the base to suit the smokebox curve using a 4 mil round nose eBay cutter, using my favorite, step by step, method. Here's the setup. Using a plunger clock to simplify the vertical slide readings. I'm now using Google Sheets to calculate the increments and then tweak them so that they suit the lead screw dial markings. Quite a few cuts into the job, the curve was starting to be noticeable. Cutting to full depth in quarter mil vertical increments. Halfway there, full depth at about 5.5 mil. Those lovely curves. At the end of the first day. Finished. On the machine. I do like this process. And don't mind the time it takes. The radius wasn't quite as good a match on the smoke box. As I would have liked. But. Never mind. In place. Ready for more shaping. Super glued to a 3 quarters inch bar for mandrel turning. The top taper has been turned. Super glue is perfectly adequate for this work, and requires a lot less heat to remove afterwards than my Loctite. A big radius, generated step by step. That big land needs filing down. After filing, and some polishing. The whole surface needed filing, just about. Moving straight onto the chimney cap, again steel, 1.5 inches diameter, bored through 3 quarters inch, and superglued to the mandrel for profiling the underside. Profiled step by step, working from the drawing, and photos of Charles himself. Smoothed with filing and polishing. The whole chimney will be painted, there's no brass cap for this loco reversed on the mandrel, with the top side profiled.
both upper and lower horizontal faces are angled a little. This material is a pleasure to work. It cuts beautifully. The chimney pipe is 7 8 inch, OD, by 3 quarters inch, ID, brass tube. I had a piece in my metals box just the right length. The tube is turned halfway down on each end to about 0.812 inch diameter. There's a corresponding bore in the chimney cap and base to accept the tube. A longer length in the base is I want to make the chimney removable. This feature has proved really useful in the quarry hunslet. With changing the blast nozzle, and cleaning. I wasn't pleased with the base profile in the previous image. So. I set to it again with the files. And now it's much more like that on the photos of Charles. I finished it with the Dremel. Completed chimney sitting atop the smoke box. Now the base needs holding down. I did some further smoothing with 120 grit abrasive paper under the running kitchen tap. Hole sawing 20 mil diameter for the exhaust. I used the existing small hole as a guide. The base has been soldered to the smoke box using plumber's solder. You just can see a faint outline, where I drew around the base with permanent marker as a tinning guide for the solder. Both the smoke box and chimney base underside were tinned with solder. I preheated them with a gas torch before applying the solder with my 80 watt soldering iron. I use a zinc chloride liquid flux, steel solders very well. The parts were then joined and the hole heated with the gas torch to remelt the solder. Now I could drill and tap 10 BA holes for the fixing screws. It's always nerve-wracking tapping 10 BA in steel, plenty of cutting oil, and much tap reversing was done for each hole. Not a single tap was lost. A couple of years ago, or so, I ordered some 10 BA hex head screws from Mac models. When they arrived I found they had smaller heads. I always use standard head screws. So I put them away. These screws are perfect for this job. They have 12 BA heads, or 2.5 mil AF. Here we are with two screws fitted. The size is okay. Here is my drilling setup for the base holes. I held the smokebox base to the table and timber back stop. The holes were marked out and center punched first. All eight holes have now been drilled and tapped. The next stage will be to mount the smokebox to the loco frames, so that the cylinders or boiler can be started, and then the smokebox can be completed.